Glory Chandra, how are you? Where? Damdava Maharaj. Damdava Maharaj, Damdava Maharaj, Damdava Maharaj, Dandava Bhagavan. Dandava Krishna Mohini's light bulb. How are you? <laughs> and I can never see Sham Shama Malini. I can never see Shama Malini. She's she's behind the curtain of the deities. Oh, and there's Guru Parampara. Shama Malini, are you there? Hmm. Who's there with you, Krishna Mohini? Is that Mahamantra? Mm. Mahamantra, yes, Maharas. Is he in the house? Subhadra is here. Subhadra. Yes, Subhadra is here also. Hello, Subhadra. Como estas? Como estas, Subhadra? Que haces? Estas not animas. Sonriendo hacen muñecos. Saludos, Maharas. Anda. Llegando, Maharas. Now there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and none of them are from Great Britain. I think maybe Devashish is not even from Great Britain, huh? Yeah, Maharas, I am. Well, I thought you were from uh, some province. Well, no, actually, I'm, I mean, officially, I'm born in Hereford, which is England. But all my, my ancestors come from Wales because Hereford's on the border of Wales. But it's all still part of Great Britain. From Wales. That means your ancestors live in the water? <laughs> No whales, Marge. Yeah, the Welsh. We know, but whales live in the water, right? Yeah, that was a joke when I was a kid. How do you get to two whales in a, in a mini? You just drive down the M1. What's how, why is that? What's the what's that mean? How do you get two whales in a mini? A mini is a little car. Yeah, a mini clipper. So, yeah. So you just drive down the M1. That's how you get to Wales in a car. Oh, oh, I see. All right. Very, very, yeah. very clever, huh? <laughs> uh -huh. Apparently, some, apparently, Shama Malini didn't like the jokes because she left. Oh, dear. Oh, she's been su suffering with the COVID, so um, maybe she's not feeling well. Is she still suffering with the COVID? Yeah. As, as of a couple of days ago, yeah, her and her husband were both still suffering. Why didn't she catch a more benevolent variety? I don't know. I think they were, they'd run out. Run out. Yeah. It's like... What they say, uh, so, so like I was with Ashram Marsh and, and on a flight which is maintained by one of the worst airlines possibly known to mankind, but I don't think it's as bad as that, but it's maybe one of the worst in, in Mexico. It's called Viva Aerobus. And you'd wonder about an airline that's called 
Erebus. Oh. Viva Erebus. Okay. And then one of the options was that when you're asking for s s seats, you could ask for unspecified, meaning you don't want to pay the exorbitant rate to have a seat assigned to you. So he said, he said, um, he said he wanted to get an uns when it comes to seats, they said he applied for unspecified. And they said that option's no longer available. You have to either take the second group or the first group, which is more expensive. I mean, they've already gone through the third and fourth group. But how can unspecified no longer be available? I mean, yeah, that's I mean, crazy. Huh? That's crazy. Yeah, it's like I'm asking for unspecified, and they say, oh, there's no longer any more unspecified seats un available. It's like, uh, wait, what does unspecified mean? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> means like the definition of unspecified means if if it's the last seat you have available and it's between two whales, put me in it. But I'm not yeah, paying, exactly. I'm not paying for more more yeah. expensive seat. And they're saying, Oh, I'm sorry, that's already been used up. Now you have to pay for the second group or even more than that, the first group. And it's like, oh, I couldn't even get a third or fourth uh, price because those seats <laughs> above it. You know, it's, these are the things that make people take to drinking. You know, like <laughs> dealing with these kind of airlines. I mean, it's just yeah. unreal. And I had that too. I said, I, I went on a on a Guatemalan Airlines, and I said, I said, um, I told the person. You know, do you ha do you have a, any any uh, seats that are no smoking? This was years ago, and they said all our so seats are either no smoking or smoking as you as you like. <laughs> and it's like uh, it's like, do you have do you have can. Can your doors on the plane open up in flight in case somebody wants to jump out? Yeah, it's like God. So Lord. that's why we have some uh, some Indian people. They come to the temple, and if you ask them, "Are you vegetarian?" they say, "Veg and non-veg." Yeah, <laughs> and you should say. Then you could say to them, "Oh, that's like saying you're." Half pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> you asked a woman, you know, and she'd say, "I'm half pregnant." It's like, are you either pregnant or are you either pregnant or you're not pregnant? Right, what do you mean right. Half pregnant. That's it. I can't. We won't say anything involving. Uh, and who's Eli Elibis iPhone? I think Ellie Beth must be um, must be um, Krishna Bandhu Guru's wife. I'm I'm guessing. I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. That looks like uh, Saraswati. Yes, it's me. But Ellie Beth, I think, is uh, Indulekha. Yeah. Yes, it is. There we are. She's appeared. You know, if you changed Elizabeth into Elizabeth, it would be a very much of an English name. <laughs> Elizabeth is quite English, actually, traditionally. Yeah. Yeah. Queen Elizabeth the first that was her that was her you know like pet name was Ellie Beth really yeah yeah Let me try. It's not a rush. It's not a rush. It's who is that that's Doyal Mitai. Doyal Mitai. okay 
Yeah, I, I got headphones and he can't actually hear you. Maybe. Let me what? see if I tell you. Pardon. I'm saying that I have. What happened? She oh. disappeared. <laughs> yep. And like, and like that, she's gone. That was that was from a movie, you know. So, Marge, we have some questions tonight. Yes. Three, in fact. Three. Uh, yeah. So, the first question is: Is fanaticism or blind faith valuable in some instances in devotional life? Ah. Uh. Well, one time I was in Italy, and uh, one person there said said that um, myself and and that Sagarmars that we were fanatics, and Srila Srila Govindamar said, "I would like to be known as a fanatic for my Gurudev." That for my Gurudev, I'm I would like to be seen as a fanatic. So you know, maybe we don't in the classic definition of a fanatic, meaning almost akin to a terrorist or something. We wouldn't want to be known as like that kind of a person. But what the idea is, this uh, I can say that the word fanatic, in one sense, can be very connotative. I mean, in the sense that it may not mean the same thing to everybody, and it may be used just as a word can say about somebody you don't like. I don't like that person. He's really a fanatic. But all you're really saying is, I don't like that person because he doesn't really agree with me. <laughs> you know. So, in that sense, in that sense, since it's, since the word fanatic, if you take it in the classical sense, you would say, no, we don't want to be a fan fanatic. And then the second part of that question, it says, with just blind faith. Well, that's the whole, that's the whole issue is that we are not interested in blind faith, but sometimes blind faith is something is revealed to somebody with blind faith. You know, in other words, what appeared to be blind faith, we're not interested, just I'll say outright, we're not so much interested in blind faith, that somebody just falling blindly and not doesn't have any real understanding. But I will say that, you know, the whole thing is, maybe someone starts out without having any realization, but they have some faith that the answers will come come to them. And then, you know, tate nu kampum susamikshamanu. Like, then from within their hearts, the Lord reveals himself to them. So, can you say that, can you say that there's, you know, no justification for blind faith? Maybe my faith is blind because I'm not of sufficient realization. But other persons who are more mature than myself, they may be more realized about these things. And maybe one of those persons who just may be more realized about these things than myself is my Gurudev. Maybe my Gurudev, for him, there's no questions of blind faith because he's realized. But maybe for myself, who am just coming, so to speak, coming out of the eggshell, that for me, I haven't got too much realization of anything. And therefore, someone can say, well, you're, you have blind faith. And I could say, well, maybe I do because I, I don't, I haven't, I'm not mature enough to have any realization yet. But that's a, there's a saying, in, saying in, that they have in, in India or Bengal, I believe it's a Bengali saying, it says, because my mother went naked when she was born, does that mean she's going to go naked all her life? In other words, it's kind of 
a very bad logic to think that because somebody at the age of two years old, figuratively speaking, doesn't have any realization and therefore can be accused of having blind faith that believes in something but doesn't have any realization. So that could be classified as blind faith. But I could say, well, that doesn't mean that because that person's new or, or still somewhat immature in their realizations doesn't mean that what they're doing is necessarily evil or wrong. Maybe they just haven't got any realization yet, but one would hope that in the future they will get some realization. So read the question again. Are fanaticism or blind faith valuable in some instances in devotional life? Well, is I don't know. First of all, I would say I'm not so sure that blind faith and fanaticism are interchangeable. Yeah. You know, is blind faith, is fanaticism mean that there's blind faith? Well, you could just say that that person, for one reason, or is so so convinced of their own faith that they're they're you know they they're blind in their perceptions they don't understand what other people's perception is of them nor do they have uh perceptions of other people they, they therefore as a fanatic they might they um you know they might be even willing to kill other people which we would say please uh, take that person out of here, take that person, you know, in some cases we'd say, please take that person to the gallows, <laughs> you know. So blind faith and what was the other? Uh, and fanaticism. Fanaticism. Well, somebody, you know, somebody may have, as I said, fanaticism without having blind faith. They may be so much believe in their realizations or so much believe in in their cause that they can do anything whether properly seated or wrong they can do that you know like like some some persons you know they they may believe for instance in nationalism in their nation, they may believe in their nation so ardently, so fanatically, you know, that they're, they don't care if they're killed. They're willing to die for their beliefs. So they may be fanatics and they may, conversely, they may be able to attack other people who don't share their beliefs. And we would say, yes, that person's a fanatic. But on the other hand, is that, you know, is all this kind of fanaticism, you know, is it always bad? I mean, sup suppose you had someone defending your house or your country who you considered a fanatic and you knew they would never stop fighting as long as they were alive. Is that something so terrible? I mean, it can be terrible in the wrong circumstances, it can be terrible if that person's, you know, you could say, well, how could it be really bad in some circumstance? Well, it might be bad if that person's willing to kill me, you know, I may not like that. I may not vote for that. I may not vote for that brand of fanaticism. fanaticism. We all, we want to kill all blue-eyed Americans that are under 5'7", five, 5'7", seven, five <laughs> seven inches. Then I'd say, well, I don't know if I really want to embrace that. So there's not, it's not really, fanaticism, fanaticism and blind faith are not interchangeable. And the blind faith may just be because at that particular stage of their existence, that person has no realizations. There's no, no actual real realizations, right? So, I, I mean, maybe there's some other nuances I'm not picking up in that, but when I heard Govindamar's 
say, I want to be known as a fanatic for my Gurudev. Then I thought, well, if somebody says that, said that about me, then I'm a fanatic. And at the same time, Gurudev is saying, I want to be known as a fanatic for my Gurudev. I was thinking, well, you know, why should I necessarily get upset about that kind of a pithid or that kind of, you know, why should I care? I mean, in general, I don't care. I don't really care what people say, just in general, unless, unless it becomes uncomfortable for me. Uncomfortable means some physical threat. Mm. So I don't know if I've answered that question. Beautiful answer, Mark. All right, and now what's the next question? Okay, the next question. The uh, next okay, question. So let's see. Okay, yes, I'd like to see what's behind door number two. <laughs> Hang on. Now, uh, what's that? Where is that? Um, yes. So the next question relates to a verse in, um, oh, it's just that gone. Um, from, uh, Amritam, and I think that the person asking the question has kind of misunderstood the verse a little bit, but uh, it's uh, in, uh, where are you, I'll just find it. Who's Ananda Swarupini? Ananda Swarupini is Madhusudan Maharaj's disciple. Oh, let's see, there she is. Dhanavat, where are you in what city? I'm in Hounslow. And where? In Hounslow, near the West London Temple. Hounslow? Yes. It's near the uh, West London Temple. Okay, nice. It's spelled mm -hmm. H-O-U-N-D-S-L-O-W? Um, no D. No, yeah. No, I didn't say, C. I didn't say C. I said H O U N D S L O W. Like Madam. that, but without the D, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hounslow. Okay. I thought it was Hounslow. I was wondering where are these, where do the people in the UK come up with these names? Even. Hounslow is a little unusual, but it sounds nice. I wouldn't mind living in a place called Hounslow. It kind of reminds me of Hound Dog. <laughs> All right, how so are you, Maharaj? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> mm, just listening. Uh, it's always nice to listen. And so your your husband is a Goswami Mars disciple? No, no, that. No, I have a husband. Maybe you're thinking about um, Leela Mai. Oh, somebody was initiated in uh, <coughs> East London by by um, Mato Sudamaraj. Leela Mai is my god sister. Yeah, I think it's her. Okay. <coughs> is she also from England? She um, lives in England. She's... But she's from... Um... She's from uh, Argentina. Oh, Argentina. Yeah. Nice. And I take it. Um, I take take it Ananda Swarupini. She's she's from England, judging by her accent. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So, Marge. Um, Ananda Govinda, how are you? We're just getting a, going on with the... the Dandavad, Maharaj. Dandavad. Where, where are your wives and daughters and all that? Uh, they're not in the temple, they are in, at home. Okay, and you're in the temple. Okay. And... And L 
early bit I remember is, uh, um, then how did she get an English, how did she get an English name, if you said? Ellie Who? Beth is an English name when she's from Venezuela. You have to ask her mother, wouldn't you? Or her. <laughs> okay, so go ahead. Next oh, question. Sorry, Mara. <laughs> yes. Um, so I have I had an auntie, an auntie called Elizabeth, and I think they just wanted to change the name, so they changed it to Elizabeth. So that's, that's the story of it. Well, according to David Keese, that's bona fide. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. I don't know. I don't know any other anybody myself. I know in, in England, I know a few Beth. No, well, maybe there was some queen named Ellie Beth. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah. How is your health, Maharaj? How are you? It's, I'm very good. In the last few weeks, I've learned how to crawl successfully. I'm re reverting back to, uh, what do you call it? Reverting back to, to I'm regressing, so to speak. The, fin the final stage is when you're, final stage is, no, not the final stage. Before the final stage is when you're back in the womb and the final stage like that, when they talk about, what is it, Rup and Sanat, what is they talk about, oh, Krishna, um, they talk about the, where they actually, what is it, they actually forget, they, they you, know that, you know that reference, Devashish, that, that mother, mother is first, there's rumors that Mother Yashoda had a son, but no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How, yeah, so that, that yeah. Happen? When Krishna leaves Vrindavan, then they're like, then it's, oh, they're so unfortunate Krishna left. And then after a while, it's like, then it's, oh, we think that they had a son. Oh, yeah, there were rumors that they had a son. And then, oh, they have no son. How oh, terrible. It would be so good if they had a son. Yeah, it's like when Krishna leaves Vrindavan. That's he got placed in that. So, but I'm referring this to a, a a different stage, a different stage of psychological or physical regression, which maybe is known as um, the Big D, dementia, <laughs> <laughs> that you now learn have successfully learned how to crawl. But I'm, um, you know, anyway, Subhasini, how are you? And what's Maharaj? Yes, I'm okay, Maharaj, yeah. Are you in the kitchen or something? No, no, I'm in the sitting room. It's a bookshelf here, it's a, yeah. You're in the what? Where are you at? In the sitting room, in the... Okay, uh, nice. I yeah. thought, at first, I thought that the kitchen, that I thought that was a hutch or something where you kept, uh, you said it's a bookcase, but I thought it was a hutch or something, you yeah. know, where, where you kept different things in. Okay. You're well? Yes, Maharaj, I'm okay. Okay. And you, you're okay, yeah. Yeah. So, Induleka, who's that with you? As Madhuri. She's taller than me now, Maharaj. She's still in her uniform. Very smart. <laughs> she, that's a school uniform? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> My jury is not doing any more contortions now. No, no, no contortion. 
every time I mention that to her, she's like, mm, we always remember you when <laughs> I mentioned that yeah. to her. Oh. When you came last time. Well, you know, that doesn't, that, <laughs> that doesn't really, that doesn't really surprise me at all that when she's more small, she would yeah. do all those things. But yeah. I bet still probably double jointed or something could, could, you know. Uh, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> oh. But anyway, what's that uniform? It's like, do all the ladies who go to school, do they wear ties? Yeah, most schools, yeah. Oh. <laughs> they should have ties, ties and smoking, ties and smoking jackets. Yeah, a blazer. A blazer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's been some years since I saw Maduri. I don't know how many years, but maybe three or four years. Maybe three four years. years. Yeah. Yeah. Three years. Yeah, maybe three years. Physically. And what's Maduri's sister's name? Sundari. 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 Is yeah. she going to school too? Uh, she just finished. She's in college now. What college is she in? What's it called? She goes to a college for like a music, musical, musical yeah. college. Oh, she studies okay. music. Okay. Maybe yeah. takes after, maybe takes after her father. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. Nice. It's very nice. I'm happy to see both of you. Nice to yeah, see you nice too, see. Mara. And so what's the next question, Devashish? Yes, Mara. So, it's from this verse from uh, Prabhupada Jivanamrita, from the uh, uh, um, Jamuna Charja. However, I may be materially designated, however, my character may be known now, O oh Lord, this whole sense of ego is offered by me and to your holy lotus feet. So, um, the question relating to that, which I think maybe means that uh, didn't quite understand the meaning of the verse, but um, just bear with me a moment while it comes back up. So the question, yeah, well, question related. Easy. I think it's pretty easy to understand. Yeah, but that's why I, I think it was kind of misunderstood the meaning. As well, to me, the meaning is like this. Whoever I am, whoever I am, or whatever I am, whoever I may be considered, or whatever I may be considered, whatever that is, I'm offering everything to you, my Lord. Right. I'm yours, like mind, body, and soul. And in whatever designation somebody put, wants to put on me, or whatever designation I put on myself, that doesn't matter. Everything that I have belongs to you, good or bad or this or that. I don't really care. It just belongs to you, right? I'm yes, Marge. So that that's why the, I think the question is means they misunderstood a little bit because the question is um, how how can we in our present condition state offer our designations to the Lord? And how do we do that practically? But I think you answered it basically. I'll just block this late. I'll just block this l later. I get pictures or always some message, uh, you know, not exactly overtly come ons, but they'll say, This is so and so. Are you still there in New York? I haven't right. seen you a long time. I'd like to have. <laughs> I'd like to have lunch with you, and it's it's always some, some, some 
attractive woman whose real name is Vladimir. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so go on. I, that's how I'd answer that question. Oh, not mute it. Okay. Um, yeah, so that question was, you know, present condition state, how can we practice to offer our designations to the Lord? And how do we do that practically? How do we, in our present state, okay, I think it's a little related to the second question. How do we offer our designations to the Lord? Uh, well, I don't know in what sense this person means that. Are they trying to prepare a designated, are they trying to prepare a designation pakora? <laughs> or, you know, what do they mean? How can we offer our present designations to them? Yeah, the Lord? I think that's what I mean by that. They didn't fully understand the meaning of the verse. Um, and you explained it perfectly that whatever my designation, however people can perceive me or I perceive myself, doesn't matter. I offer your you i belong to you i offer myself to you and um, then how can i then what's the last question so so i think you've answered that question but the, the yeah the last question is just very simply what is real seva no but the previous one I yeah mean, so apparently how do we, there were four questions so i think the one the last one which we just glossed over but haven't answered yet is the third one Right? Well, there's three, but that one is relating to that verse of Jamuna Charya where he says, whatever my designation may be. But um, that the um, questioner is saying, in our present condition state, how do we offer those designations to the Lord? How do we do that practically? How do we offer those designations to the Lord? By just surrendering yourself then Whatever, whatever you're surrendering, you're surrendering yourself, body, mind, and soul, you know, Atmani Vedana. You're surrendering yourself completely to the Lord, then you don't have to worry about how to offer those designations. They're all concluded. They're all included in the package. Yes. They're all included. The, the, the package includes the, the designations. That's the main point. You're surrendering everything to the Lord. So whatever designations you put upon yourself or other people put upon you, it doesn't matter. You're surrendering everything to the Lord. Somebody may think, oh, well, this is a good person. Okay, that that designation, I'm a good person, that's also offered to the Lord. No, this person is a very bad person. <clears throat> okay, that designation that I'm a very bad person, whatever people may consider me to be. I am offering myself to the Lord. That includes whether I'm a good person or a bad person in terms of in terms of the society. You know, it's something related to, I think it's also by Jamunacharya where he says, you know, uh, people may think this or they may think that, but uh, as far as I, well, there's several verses like that. Yeah. You know, more, you know uh, ablations to the ancestors, bathing in the morning, whatever. I bid thee adieu, but now I can't. I am not worried about, uh, you know, fulfilling all the obligations of, of whether moral ob obligations or social obligations. I am not worried about them because I'm just considering that my only my only desire is to serve the lotus feet of the Lord, or to serve the lotus feet of Gurudev. So I'm bidding adieu to all these, all these responsibilities, whether social, moral, or ethical, or anything. I'm bidding all that farewell. So there's one verse like that, and then there's another verse. What what was this question again? Because it was related more to, with that other verse. What's this question again? Um, 
how in our present condition state do we offer our designations to the Lord and how do we do that practically? Okay. Well, that was related to that question from a quote, I think a quote from Yamunacharya. Yeah. And I'm trying to think of the other reference from a Yamunacharya. One is that I said, I'm, you know, ba um, you know, oblations to the ancestors, this, that, and that. I bid thee adieu. Now I feel my only obligation is to satisfy the lowest feet of the Lord. And that's one. And then there's another quote by Jamunacharya. I'm trying to think of. Um, there's something in the. It's something related to the perception of others. Friends may consider that I'm this. Someone may consider that I'm, you know, all the different considerations. Somebody may consider I'm morally bankrupt. Somebody may consider that I'm this, or somebody consider may consider that. But the purport of I'm very bad at quoting this, quoting verses. But the idea is that. You know, I'm not really concerned about what other people think, or maybe I am concerned about what other people think, but I'm still trying to, whatever I have, I'm trying to surrender that to the lowest feet of the Lord. I mean, uh, I'm unfairly or un, 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 improperly linking two things together that are maybe more than subtly different, but I, I feel it relates to the same thing. And the last question? The last question is, what is real seva? What is real seva? Well, I, I believe I heard Guru Marsh talk about that. He said, where he said, he said, like taking it from the other extreme, he says that even what people may term to be proper or, or, or good, you will even say seva, he was said, may ultimately be considered to be pop or sinful activity if it doesn't really have as its central purpose, you know, surrendering to the feet of the lotus feet of the Lord and serving the Lord. Even if someone is so called doing something right in terms of the scriptures in terms of the injunctions of the scriptures, but it doesn't really involve the process of surrendering to the Lord, that may also be seen as pop, as sinful, right? Mm -hmm. So again, the question? What is real seva? Well, real seva, I would consider to be that which is asked to Asked of, asked of me by the Lord and his and his devotees that that which is expected or asked of me to be to do like real seva and then we have the classic example of Krishna having a headache everybody knows that story Krishna has a headache so um, you know it is then said and they want to know who's really interested in serving the Lord or who's really surrendered to the Lord. So everyone they asked, you know, Krishna has a headache and, it, and it's said that the only way he can cure his headache is to give the foot dust of a devotee. And the person, everyone is saying, uh, oh, if you put your foot dust on the head of the Lord, then you'll go to hell. We can't give foot dust and this and that. They all give reasons why they can't give their foot dust, but when they go to the, we can say, when they go to Vrindavan, they're the residents of Vrindavan, especially the gopis are saying, yes, here, take our foot dust. You know what this means? Yes, we know. We'll go to, we'll go to hell, but that's not important. The only important thing is that Krishna's headache be cured because they were saying they needed the dust from a devotee's feet. Nobody else wanted to give the dust because they thought in terms of the injunctions, this will mean to be tantamount to me going to hell. Then I put my foot dust on the head of the Lord, then I'm going to hell. But 
The gopis didn't care. They said, what do we care if we go to hell? We just want to make sure that Krishna's headache is taken care of. So in that case, if somebody said, well, what is real seva? I would say seva is what that is that which is being ex asked of one or expected of one. In our case, we may not be able to act upon the wishes of the Lord because we're not in that level of realization or communication, but we can certainly act upon what has been asked of us by Gurudev, by the Lord's representative. Then I will feel, well, Gurudev asked me to do this, so I try to do that. Like one thing, one thing Gurudev did ask me, he said, please come every year for Gaur Purnima. I, I want my sannyasis to be here for Gaur Purnima. Now, obviously last year and the year before maybe, we couldn't go for Gaur Purnima because of the pandemic. Now, we could go to we could go to India for uh, Gaur Purnima. I'm understanding that the they will give an e e thirty day visa. You can get thirty days e visa to go to India. Now that would be nice, and I think that's been in effect since November. But I feel I actually feel bad that I can't go to India and and fulfill what was asked of me by Gurudev. He, he said, spend, when you come to India, spend 30 days or more here. So I could almost fulfill that with an E30 visa. But, you know, I'm not going to India. It's just not, I would want to go with somebody and I'm not ready to just jump on a plane right now at this stage. But what is Seva? I would say Gurudev asked me to be in India every year for Gaur Purnima, so I would consider my saver responsibility is go to India as, as much as I'm able to, to be there for Gaur Purnima. So that's, you know, what is seva? I would say that seva comes down to, seva comes down to you and somehow or other is being offered to you by the, by the higher Vaishnavas. They're asking you to, to please do this or please be there. And I would consider that to be seva, to do what is expected of me. And if somebody says, so conversely, does that mean that, um, that if you don't do what's being asked to you by the superior Vaishnav, then whatever you do is not seva? And I would say, well, I don't know. I can't really make so, such a, I can't really make such a judgment. If you want to make that kind of judgment, go to some Param Vaishnava and ask them. Don't, don't, don't put your, don't put your questions in this mailbox. In other words, you want the right answer, go to a Param Vaishnava. Hmm. Who's that? In New Lake, who's that with you? Uh, that's Doyal Nitai Maharaj. I was telling you, but my head's been cut. They call them. It's Dandabot. Dandabot, how are you? Good, good. Well, I, had, I had a bad time. I had a cough. You had a cough? Like, yeah, I had a cough and after like like a couple of weeks ago. But it wasn't. It wasn't. I, 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 I had COVID nineteen. Like, no, you didn't have. Your cough was it? Was yeah, your you cough? Have COVID, you know, because was, was, was your cough COVIDy or not COVIDy? No, no, it's, it's fine now. It's fine. It wasn't a. It wasn't a COVID type cough, huh? It, was, it no. wasn't like a COVID type cough. Well, when I had a cough, I was talking to my doctor and he said, I said, I have a cough in a sore throat. And he said, well, you, you have COVID. And I said, how do you know? And he says, cause every, cause those are the symptoms. But I mean, I mean, I've had cough. 
I've had a cough and a sore throat a million times and it wasn't COVID. But strangely <laughs> enough, when I got tested for COVID, I did have COVID. I had cough and a sore throat and I had COVID. So big deal. Yeah. yeah. Is that as bad as you got, Maharaj? Just a cough? What? What I don't do you think? COVID. I didn't. I don't have COVID anymore. That was on my birthday. I had COVID on my birthday. Kind of put a bit of a damp, put a little bit of a damper on my birthday because nobody was able to see me. Yeah. Why are you? Why? Why are you? Are you the one who gets me the sweet? Am I what? <laughs> If you're the one that gave him some sweets, he remembers, he remembers you giving him some sweets. Maybe. Somebody somebody gave me this, this sweet. It was pretty good. It was from Peru. It was called Choco Teja. It was pretty good. Did, that, did the sweet that somebody gave you, was it good? Was the sweet good? Do you remember the sweet being good? Uh, I, I don't know what it tastes like. You don't remember. Yeah. You don't remember. <laughs> then I probably didn't give it to you. If, if it was really good, then I probably gave it to you. <laughs> I'll take credit. For, I'll take credit for for something being good. But if you don't remember, it looks like. If 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 you don't remember who, if it tasted good or not, I'll say, oh, and then that was probably somebody else who gave it to you. <laughs> I think was my What's what's in what's his name again? Doyan Nitai. Oh, what a nice name, Doyan Nitai. Yeah. Merciful, merciful Nitai. Very yeah. Good. Guru you Mark, gave my name. Names my name. You get you gave him his name. He's saying. Okay. <sighs> he, he's looking really nice. He looks very good. Yeah. He's also in school uniform. Huh? <laughs> He's also wearing school uniform. <laughs> is, he, is he also as tall as you? No, not yet. <laughs> but Stand well, up, Nita. Look. Okay. <laughs> he will. He, he will be though. Not long. <laughs> How old is he? I'm like six. Oh, six. Getting maybe another three or maybe four years. You'll be taller than your mother. Yes, probably. Oh, well, I'm 10. Yeah. 10, yeah. Maybe nine. We... <laughs> yeah. And. It... Um, um, Dad, Dad said we're going to have a, like, a sleepover at your, at, at your temple. At that temple in London, maybe. Yeah, and then, and then, and then. But Dad said, maybe on Friday, but no, we have a sleepover. Oh. Do you go to the you, temple? Or you, you guys are in Born, Bournemouth, right? Yes, <laughs> we're in Bournemouth. And um, we were planning to come to the temple on Saturday. And Krishnabandu's computer, and with the one that he used for work, it just broke. What about, what about Gaur Purnima? Yeah. So, so the thing is, like, we can only go for one day. Why? Because um, KB doesn't want to stay overnight. And then to go there and back, there and back is um, expensive. The, the petrol prices are so expensive here at the moment as well. And there's no room to stay in the temple? There, I'm pretty sure there is room. <laughs> but okay. KB... KB is not, doesn't really want to stay at the moment at the temple. Okay. Because he, his computer broke and um, he, he has someone coming. To, I, anyway, no? I, don't, I don't think he's confused. I don't think he's confused. He just probably has different ob responsibilities see. that he has to attend to. I guess so. Okay, back to Devashish for a minute. I went through question number four. Yeah. Is that all of them? That's it, Mara. Yeah, unless anyone in, uh, else about, has a question. What about Saraswati? Do you have any questions? What happened to Gordon Orion? Um, 
I guess he's, I'm, I'm, be, I'm doing the, the actual evening puya and cooking as well. So I've just been running in and out. So I, I haven't been really focused. He's uh, somewhere in the building. Okay. What are you cooking? Dinner? Uh, I just made, some, I just made some um, um, butternut squash soup and some oat bread. Wow. It sounds really English. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just like three of us here, Maharaj. So I cook. I had to cook very, very tiny. Okay, not many good. Big okay, okay, good. We're waiting for you here, Maharaj, in August, right? What now? When when is it in August that you have the program? Uh, w w well, we don't know yet because the calendar hasn't come out yet. We we have to wait until uh, April, isn't it? No, yeah, maybe, but I can give you a hint. Okay. Your, why don't you just look on? Why don't you just look on Iskon's calendar and see which day John Mastami is? Is it'll be within one day or the one day one way or the other? Right. So I'll do that. There's a site uh, I mentioned. What was the name of that site? It was called, what is it? Something Panchang. Yeah, Panchang. Drik Panchang. Drik Panchang. Okay. Uh, so I'm okay. trying to see. So it's there. Yeah, I'll just tell you now. Drik Panchang, right? I think. Okay, here. Now we want to go to when Janmashtami is, really. Approximately. It may not be exact, but. Uh, I do it. Okay. It's, where is it? Calendars. Okay. All right. I have Telugu calendars, Marathi calendars, everything like that. Okay, so now we're looking at August, right? Mm hmm And August, which is June, July, August. And here, okay, it looks like, according to their calendar, Janmashtami is on the 19th. Uh-huh. So maybe since they're, so... Oh, wait a minute. I wanted to, I don't want this since now that I'm mentioning it. I don't want it. I don't want it says Santa Cruz. I want they'll calculate the wrong day anyway. So I want to put Kolkata. Okay, Kolkata. And now I'll see. This will show me if they have the Janmashtami on the same date as in India. Okay, May, June, July, August. Here. That's a Friday, the 19th. Yeah, it's, and it's the same. Friday the 19th. Now, when, when you actually did the deity uh, anniversary, mm -hmm. it would be on the 17th because... Um, it was two days before John. Was it two days before John Mustmi or one day? Yes, before two Mastami? days, I, I think. Our festival was on a Saturday, the 16th, August 2014. And I think John Mastami was on the Monday. No, it wasn't. No? No, I think, as far as I remember, the first seller, the, it. I thought the installation was on Friday. Saturday was Janmashtami. No, fr yeah, the installation was on Friday, I think. No, Maharaj, it wasn't <clears throat> because we we wanted everyone to come, and normally uh, everyone uh, everyone is working, or, so we wanted to do it on Saturday. So you did it what day? Saturday, the sixteenth of August. Okay, and uh, that was the 16th, and then the 17th must have been, 17th must have been Janmashtami. You remember the Vashish Prabhu? 
Yeah, I think it was the Monday that was Janmashtami following that. Okay. Oh, maybe so, because I think I skipped out before Janmashtami or something. I don't remember. Mm. Maybe not. Anyway, you did it on Saturday and then Monday with Janmashtami. So you did it two days before Janmashtami. So if you did it two days before Janmashtami, which was on the 19th, which is this year on the 19th, not going to, I'm not saying you would do it the same day, uh, but it would be on the, then you'd celebrate it on the 17th. Which day is Janmashtami this year? It would be a Friday if it is the 19th. Okay. Really? So then it would be on a, of course, you're not going to do it on Wednesday because I kind of, yeah, no. it, does, it doesn't work because uh, people... Yeah, yeah, I have no no objections. Don't, don't really, doesn't really matter. But then if the 19th is on, is John Moss to me and it's what, a Friday? Mm-hmm. And, and even in the month of, we're talking about the month of August? Yeah. And so then, then Nando, so would be the 20th. Saturday. Yeah, so we'd probably... We'd probably do the festival on the 13th, the Saturday before. Mm. The Saturday before? Yeah. For, for the opening festival, anniversary festival. Okay, well then, we'll see. I usually go to the Indians and try to collect Volga at that time, but that's not so much of an important. That's not too big. I can always get the Volga a little earlier, a little something like that so do you, next do you want to come earlier Maharaj or, or, or... Well, nice that's, no here. no as a matter of fact not because uh I we're talking about what are we talking about Govinda Mela was that it no yeah that would be July around July 4th isn't it that's yeah, the idea yeah, that's what I hear. Although personally, I can't understand. That's fine with me. Any date they pick is fine with me. But personally, I would, I would not understand why to pick necessarily July Fourth weekend, considering that the plane fares are going to be more expensive at that time. True. But anyway, any plus here the holidays. The summer holiday doesn't start till the end of July in the UK. The summer ho- ho- holiday doesn't start till when? The end of July, usually the end of July. So that means when the children break up from school. Why do they start their summer holiday so late? It's uh, it's from the end of July till the beginning of September. That's summer. That's the summer holiday. One yeah. measly, one measly month. Yeah, but it's about six weeks. So yeah, because they have holidays, other holidays during the year. Like in April, they have like three weeks for Easter. Why so long for Easter? I just it's just. Oh, the, anyway, I'm not going to argue. Can't figure it out. <laughs> why? Why do they think it took so? I guess they. I guess they must think that Christ was a late riser. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> like, they call a late riser someone who gets who wakes up from bed late. Yeah. Well, in this case, we're talking about what is it? Late riser from. All right, enough of enough of these. But, but Maharaj, if, if you so, um, if you I, also I, if you also plan to go to Ireland, for example, <laughs> then you need to have uh, enough time here, right? Yeah. If when this time, I'm not going to be rushed. I mean, if I'm going to go to England and it's some holiday is coming up and I'm supposed to get back for that holiday, I'll just say tough luck. I've already promised to go to Ireland, and I will go to Ireland. Very good. <laughs> Excellent. Everybody will be happy. Well, that'll Thank be, uh, that'll, be all, 
that'll be that will be all good and sounds very good as long as I actually get on a plane, you know, like they say, what's the saying goes, many a slip twixt the tongue and the lip. Now the only problem is that means even when you're eating something, you could drop it all down the front of your court, which I'd sometimes done on other occasions. So many a slip twixt the tongue and the lip, you know, and things don't always work out according to the way you've got it planned. But if I am on a plane, then, then I'll just stay and go to Ireland unless, you know, unless there's some national or global or some kind of huge uh, hit, apocalypse, you know, you can't, you can't, go to, you can't go to Ireland, you can't go to Ireland tomorrow. Why? Because the whole earth was destroyed today. There was a Pralaya. <laughs> there was a Pralaya that started at noon. So you're not on, oh, we were just reading the story of Markandeya Rishi. You read that, right? In the, did you read the Parikramas? Yeah. Navadi Dham Mahatmya. Now, Mark and Dea Rishi got the boon that he could live for seven kalpas, and there happened to be a pralaya, so uh, he, there was a complete flooding, I guess, partial flooding of the universe, and he was very uncomfortable just floating in the water and, you know, going through the whole pralaya. It was not a pleasant experience for him. And then he saw below the, the, the expanse of Nabadeep was not affected <coughs> by the pralaya. So then... What is the pralaya? Devastation, destruction. You know. when, the, when the world ends, basically. Yeah. So Mark... Markandeya Rishi was uncomfortable during the pralaya. He was just floating around and everything and not at all comfortable. So then he saw Nabadi below him and Surabi, the cow, who was there since, apparently since the time of Lord, uh, since the time of Indra's trying to devastate the world, that Surabi came with Indra and then he left and Surabi stayed, and then she stayed at, where did she stay? By a big banyan tree. And why is that important? Because that place is called Godruma Dvip. And Godruma Dvip means go cow druma, like kalpa druma. It means tree, cow tree island, Dvip. So the other day, I was talking about the Parikramas and someone said, well, why do you say all these Sanskrit and Bengali names? Why do you just go, you know, and I said, well, because it's, that's the names of the people. Why do I call, why do we call, call somebody by their name in this world? Because that's their name. You know, it, it wouldn't be very comfortable to call the people, the place, Cow Tree yeah. Island, right? It sounds like absurd, Cow Tree Island. So I prefer Godruma Dvip. Hmm? Now, and I like what Govinda Mars said. Somebody said to Govinda Mars, what does my name mean? And Govinda Mars said, why do people ask me what their name means? He said, I don't ask you what your name, I don't ask what does Jonathan mean? Or what does Elizabeth mean, you know? In other words, somehow or other, even though all the names that Govinda Maharaj gives, they're all, they all have their meaning, like, you know, obviously Nanda Sutta or whatever, you know, son of Nanda Maharaj. You can understand, that you can look up, you can understand what the name means. But Govinda Maharaj didn't like to be asked, what does my name mean? You know, it's like saying, and he said, I don't ask you what your name means. 
I don't ask them what Jonathan means or I don't ask them what Doug means or anything like this. You know, so why are you asking me what my name means? And I would say, yeah, why do you ask him? Why don't you, if you're so curious, go, go, re go research it. Ask Sri Google. Hmm? So we're getting, days going on, getting later. It's getting close to dinner time. Okay, Gorachandra, you or Falguni, do you have a question? Uh, no. I'm good. No, all good, Maharaj. All right. Always happy to hear you, whatever the conversation is. So, so nice. Thank you very much. That's all well and good, but just a few devotees came today, huh? We're in the middle of the Gore Purnima meltdown, right? <laughs> Today, for you guys, now, oh, wait, no, it's still Wednesday there. So tomorrow's your Adi boss, right? Yeah. <sighs> I still Dandavad have Maharaj. one. Dandavad, Ishanuga, how are you? All right, how are you, Mahara? How are you? Good. Happy to see you. Good to see you. Hoy alguien me preguntó. ¿Por qué durante el, los perícromas, por qué estoy hablando parte del tiempo? O no, no solamente yo, porque tanto, tanto tiempo del programa está en español. Y yo decía, bueno, ¿por qué? Porque hay más, más de dos terceras partes de las personas hablan español. Me parece una razón lógica para hablar también. Por lo menos la mitad del tiempo en español. I was saying, was asked to me, why are you speaking, why are you speaking Spanish during the, during the Nambadip Dam Perikramas? And I was saying, because two thirds of the people in our audience are Spanish speaking. So if, you know, and then they said, then somebody said, well, maybe, maybe two thirds of your audience are Spanish speaking rather than English speaking because you, because you don't speak in English. And I do speak in English. They're just intolerant, I think. But anyway. <laughs> uh, and finally, they said, they said, well, you know, you'd have more people attending if you, if you spoke in English. And I said, and I said, yeah, but when we go to Nabadeep, when we're on Parikramas, they might speak English, Spanish, and also Bengali at a particular place. So why can't people wait through the Spanish that's being spoken? Why does it have to be all in English? And somebody said, "Well, if you if you don't if you don't have it in English, then you then well people will not want to come and listen." And I'm more or less, I think I said the wrong thing. I said, well, I don't care what a bunch of bloody Americans care about. <laughs> that person said, well, I'm an American. Why are you talking like that? Well, because you're asking me why I speak in Spanish during the program when over two thirds of the people are Spanish speaking. What do you want me to do? And wouldn't we do that if we were in Nabadeep and we're on a Parikrama? Maybe I speak in English, then, then then maybe a, a, Ashram Mars will speak in Spanish, which is what we do at the programs. And then maybe somebody will speak in, speak in Bengali. And then that sounds to me like this old comment, like, well, I really, what did you think of India? I really liked it, but it was too full of foreigners. Uh, the foreigners that you're ob objecting to are the people who live there. <laughs> They just happen to be foreigners, according to you. But from their standpoint, you're the foreigner. And that was very vividly underscored when I was in France with the people, you know, in France, you could get run over by a car and and ask for somebody to help you. And they say they would answer you. Well, when you're in France, you should speak French. 
right. It's true. And don't say the story. The story. The story of plastado por un caro. Well, we don't like to speak hear somebody speaking Spanish in French, in France. <laughs> What's Falguni drinking? Ginger lemon tea. Uh -huh. What? Ginger lemon tea. Oh, really? Uh, yes. Very good. good. It's good for the throat. I know. They made it for me today, this just a few hours ago, but they put so much lemon in it. That maybe that's good, but it has so much lemon, you could hardly... I couldn't... <laughs> I didn't drink it all. Very good. All right. Any other questions? I'm pretty much done. I made it to one o'clock. We started at what time? 1030, more or less. Subhadra's gone. Subhadra's gone. Uh, Maharaj, Nitai, Nitai has a question. He's asking if, um, if uh, we are all property of Krishna. We're all property of Krishna. Is that the word property? Hmm. That's what he said. Are we property of Krishna? And, and I wanted to say, uh, God is the spiritual master, and, and, and Jesus is, the, is his son. You mean the other way around? He's basically, Maharaj, he's going to... Um, Catholic school <laughs> and he has always these questions about Jesus and God and I always tell him to see maybe Jesus like a spiritual master and he could be a spiritual master like I, I always mention that God can be called Krishna as we believe that's God but for Christians and Catholics does they got Jaba or like to so trying to explain it to him in a better context? Yeah, but what his question wasn't about that. He said, "Are we Chris? Are we property of Krishna?" Yes, if we are property of Krishna. Well, I don't know. Ask him what the. What did you say? Is that the question? Yes, Maharaj. All right. Are we property of Krishna? Yes, we're property of Krishna. We're property of Gurudev. We're property of, of we're property of Gurudev. We're property property of Mahaprabhu. Just like I may say, I may say, are you Dionitai? Are you property of your mother? Uh, I am actually. I am actually. What? I am. I am. You are property of your mom. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And is he property of Krishna? Yes. Is he property of Gurudev? Yes. Is he property of of, of Mahaprabhu? Yes. So yes, I'll answer yes to everything. Is that a good question, Ishinoga? Do you agree with that? Yes, Maharas. We are all property of Krishna. Okay. So if I'm property of Krishna, I, I hope that somebody will mail me back to him. All right. Very happy to see everyone. Is this it? Devashish, are we kind of, this is it, would you say? Yeah, I think so, Marge, unless anyone has a last question. Subhasini, do you have any questions? No, Maharaj, I don't have any, any questions. How about uh, this person here? Ananta Govinda, do you have a question? I never saw Shama Malini. Shama Malini. No, Maharaj. Okay. I never saw Shama Malini. I see the deities. Yes, Maharaj. Sorry. 
I was at work. <laughs> Don't have us for much. I was at work earlier on. And now I'm back. <laughs> Don't have us for much. Okay, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. I'm a lot better now. I'm negative. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're you're better? Yes. Still my taste is I'm I'm also drinking lemon and honey with a little bit of salt in it. <laughs> Yeah, it's good for the taste, but I'm a lot better. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, my dandavas to everyone. Ishanuga, okay. you came Hello, late. Do you, have a, do you have a question, Ishanuga? No, I had asked. Okay. <laughs> how was how is your work? Do you like it? It's all right. I just uh, work for paying you, the bills. What do you do? Uh, facials and um, massage and a few other treatments. Okay. Beautician. She's a beautician. Oh, nice. A beauty therapist. A beauty therapist, my, does that sound like a specialist? Beauty <laughs> therapist. What about, what about some people like myself who are not beauty, who are not beautiful, do we get an ugly therapist? <laughs> Somebody. You are beautiful, Maharas. All right. You have Krishna and Gurudev. All right. So my Dandavat pranams to all of you. Happy to see you. Hope to be there. Hope to be able to go to Ireland. I mean, Ireland, like the, the Shamrock Isle, the mystical place. We very much look forward to that, Maharaj. Yeah. Yeah. Do you like it there in Subhasini? Are you, do you like Ireland very much? Yes, uh, I I do like it. I also miss uh, India. Uh, you know, I, I although I have been here for really fifteen years now. And um, do you go home? To, do you go home to India sometime? Yes, uh, before the COVID, I we go very often, like uh, uh, twice a year. I used to go, but uh, now I haven't been there for two years now, more than two years. I'm planning so, to go. April next month, yeah. So where do you go? Where will you go when you go there? I fly to Chennai, actually, my home. So Come if I up. go, if I go to, if I go to UK in in August, will you be there? Yes, hopefully I'll I'll be there because I'm not going to India at that time. I'm I'm going next month for a few weeks, but I'll be back hopefully. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I hope to be there. I hope to be here to do some service to you. So I very much look forward to that. Yeah, life. because if you're not there, I'll wait to go there when you're there. Yeah, I hope I've, I'll be there by the grace of uh, Gurudev and yourself and uh, to do some service here. So, so you live in Tamil Nadu state? Yes, yes, Maharaj. Yeah, we are from Tamil Nadu. Yes, yeah. Oh, very nice. Okay, I'm happy to see everyone. Bhagavan, how are you? Umastas. Okay. Saraswati Kim Paso Por La Cocina. Dando Maharas is uh, Ramananda. Ramananda is here. Okay. And the <laughs> Okay. All right. So I'm going to let David Sheesh end everything. <clears throat> Have, I hope everyone has a very 
nice Gaur Purnima and, and Jagannath Mishra Mahotsav. Jai Maharaj, you too. All right. Jai Mishnu Paj, Shila Bhakti, Pavan Janardhan Maharaj, Ki Jai. Ki Jai. 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 Jai